Hello everyone, Lytro Storm here, and today we're back with another part of What If Shane Killed Rick. In the last episode, we covered the events of early Season 9 and before that, and now we're going to be taking a look at the post-time skip Season 9, and just covering everything that happens at that point. So obviously, it's Part 6, so if you haven't already seen the first 5 parts, make sure you do so using the link in the description and comment section. But we've got a lot to cover now, so let's go ahead and get straight into the story. After the events that took place during the six-year time skip, which don't differ too much, Michonne closes up Alexandria's gates to outsiders. Carl is not too fond of this for obvious reasons, and has lots of disagreements with her about it. She really isn't a big sister-slash-motherly role to him here, and is instead more like an older friend. She doesn't even know who Rick Grimes is outside of him being mentioned. This also makes Carl more of the caretaker to his little sister Judith, although Daryl would also play a big role in her life since he's staying. With no Rick to go after, Daryl has no reason to go out in the woods all the time, so he pretty much just stays in Alexandria or whatever community needs him most at the time. We do have to answer whether or not Maggie would leave with Georgie since Negan isn't around and she doesn't feel any regret for what happened to Rick. But we'll say that she still wants to build the communities with Georgie and she thinks it'd be good for Herschel to get out and experience things with her instead of just staying at Hilltop all the time, especially when Michonne starts closing up Alexandria. And due to Beth still being alive, she knows things at Hilltop will be in great hands thanks to her. So maybe she leaves a little bit later, but I think she still does. The Alexandria group outside the walls when Judith saves Magna's group would probably have Carl in it instead of Laura since, uh... Well, I mean, yeah, of course it would. Carl would also replace the random dude on the council. When Magna is creeping up on Michonne's house with a weapon, she'd have no reason to stop her attempt since RJ doesn't exist to humanize Michonne. So she slowly starts opening the door, only to hear a faint whisper, hey. Magna turns around quickly, aiming the knife at Carl who has his hands up. He warns her that attacking Michonne won't look good for them and for her to trust him when he says that it won't go well for her either. Michonne is very capable in a fight. Magna drops the blade, asking why he followed her, and Carl tells her that he was coming to talk to Michonne into compromising more for her group. He just saw her sneaking around and jeopardizing that, so he wanted to stop her before she did anything rash. Magna accepts this reluctantly, and says that she'll talk to her, apologize for what happened. He doesn't have to fight their battles. Carl agrees to this, walking away. Magna and Michonne then have the same conversation they did canonically, which is much better than the two fighting. Michonne wouldn't really have that same epiphany she had from talking to Judith, but I think Carl being a strong voice in the council might sway her a little bit. But remember that Carl and Michonne don't have the same bond they do in canon, and also remember just how much it took to fully convince Michonne. There was the thoughts of Rick, which don't exist, the convo with Judith, which doesn't happen, and RJ reminding her of her humanity, and RJ doesn't exist, so yeah. So I think Gabriel and Sadiq would be leading Magna's group out of Alexandria only for Carl to show up on a horse and say that there's been a change of plans. He's taking them to a community kind of like this one, Hilltop. Sadiq says that Michonne's not going to like this, but Gabriel, who was already helping with something Michonne doesn't like, aka the whole radio signal plan, defends it. He tells Sadiq to go with them in order to keep an eye on Yumiko and her injury, and that he'll hold things down here if there's any suspicion. Magna's group thanks Carl and Judith for their help, and Carl, Sadiq, and DJ leave with them. Since Carl is already going against Michonne's decision, there'd be a lot less skepticism and conflict on the way. However, Michonne would worry once Carl and the others aren't back that night and she starts preparing a search team. This forces Gabriel to come clean as he doesn't want Michonne to be freaking out. He tells her that they're being taken to Hilltop by Carl and she gets upset at him for it. But just to be safe, she goes to someone she knows can track them down quickly, Daryl. She asks him to go after Carl and the others and make sure that they make it back safely, only for Daryl to remark that he knows Carl can handle himself, especially in a group that big. Michonne simply gives him a look, and they both remember what happened long ago when they got the X's branded on their backs. He then says that he'll go get ready, and she thanks him. In the morning, Carl quickly gives Magna's group their weapons when the walkers attack. They're able to wipe them out easier due to this, and eventually arrive at Hilltop after meeting the messengers for Rosita being found injured. Carol and Henry would probably arrive at Hilltop much sooner since they don't stop by Daryl's. Jesus and Aaron also don't go out alone to find Eugene, since Daryl isn't there yet. This means that they take longer to leave the circling herd alone, as Daryl was the one who told them a storm was coming. Gabriel and Michonne hear from the messengers about Rosita, and that freaks them out quite a bit. Past that, Carl arrives at Hilltop, where he's greeted by Beth, who is currently running things in place of her older sister Maggie. Jesus is her advisor, as he doesn't really want to accept that status as leader, and I think Beth would be more willing to fit Magna's shoes than Tara. So we kind of see a role reversal where Jesus is Tara and Tara is Beth. Yeah, sure. 
Since there's no bad blood between anyone here, I don't think Carl, Sadiq, or DJ would be forced to give up their weapons. But Magna's group probably would since they're new. Beth reveals the news of Eugene being missing and Aaron and Jesus going out to find him. Carl would also see Enid and the two would have a somewhat awkward reunion where Enid is now with Alden. I think Carl and Enid would have stayed together, but Enid would leave once Michonne closed up the walls as she wanted to live somewhere that she felt was doing things right. She knows that's what Carl wants too, but he has too much attachment to the people in Alexandria to give up. That's why he stayed behind. Beth tells Magna's group that if they want to stay, they'll have to earn their keep, and Sadiq and Carl also reunite with Carol here, which is really neat. Carol will talk to him about Alexandria, Judith, and that she thinks he'd really like Henry. He's at Hilltop to learn from a blacksmith in order to fix his home, the kingdom. Carl obviously feels a similar weight on his shoulders to fix Alexandria, so he agrees that he probably would like him. Anyway, without Daryl's clock distraction, Jesus and Aaron would be flabbergasted as the herd seems to follow them, despite never seeing them, and it's growing at a rapid rate. They also wouldn't find Eugene until a bit later, since they didn't have Daryl or Dog to help track him down. Speaking of Daryl, he'd arrive at Hilltop on his motorcycle, saying that he was there to make sure Carl and the others got here. Michonne told him to. Carl figured she'd find out what was up eventually, but Daryl then tells him that he talked to the messengers too. Soon after, Rosita wakes up, saying that she knows where Eugene is. This prompts Carl and Daryl to head out in order to find him, Aaron, and Jesus. Once Aaron and Jesus do find Eugene, they'd get chased by the herd, forcing Jesus to come up with a last minute plan to lead the herd away while Aaron gets the injured Eugene to the horses. Aaron doesn't like the plan, but Jesus knows it's the only way. However, Jesus is just completely unable to follow through with this, as even Daryl using firecrackers and dogs barking wasn't able to lead the herd away, so Jesus would not have any luck here on his own. This leaves Aaron and Eugene alone against tons of walkers, forcing them to fight back with all they've got. They were able to kill a bunch of them, mainly Aaron, but luckily, they get found by Daryl and Carl, as well as Magna and Yumiko. The four help Eugene get past the gate, forcing Aaron to fight off the walkers alone. But based on how Aaron does against Jesus in their little scuffle, he's comparable to him, but probably a little less skilled slash strong, if we're being honest. And Jesus got killed by a whisperer, so even if Aaron was just as good, he'd be killed in his place. Jesus then arrives, helping them take down the other whisperers and mourning the loss of Aaron. They find the masks and take them along with Aaron's body. And honestly, I'm probably being a bit too nice considering just how much of a disadvantage Aaron, Jesus, and Eugene were. It's entirely possible that without Aaron even making a dent in the herd, and with them going slower, that the herd would have likely caught up to them way sooner, resulting in someone else being bitten on top of Aaron's death. But like I said, I'm gonna be a little bit charitable, and just be glad nothing else happened. When they find more walkers and whisperers on the bridge, Jesus opts to take down the one Michonne killed, but he just outskills him and knocks him out, slamming him against the wall. They then hold Lydia at crossbow point and take both of them back with them. Beth and Carl interrogate Lydia along with Daryl. Sadiq and Rosita leave with DJ and Eugene to take Aaron's body to Alexandria and inform them of what's going on. Carl and Daryl stay at Hilltop in order to help out with the situation though. I think Carl would leave with Marco, Magna, and the others after telling Enid he would help find Alden. Daryl lets Henry out of jail after he talks too much to Lydia. They have the same confrontation they did in canon, but in between, Beth would tell Daryl that Carol brought Henry here. This makes Daryl feel an obligation to the kid, so we're pretty much back at where we were in canon. Back at Hilltop, we'd see Jesus lamenting to Beth about what happened. Aaron told him that he thinks he'd make a great leader, but Jesus denied it. And then he took charge by telling Aaron and Eugene to run while he distracted the herd. And he completely failed, leading to Aaron's death. As if Jesus went with them, he would have died instead. Jesus now feels entirely certain that he wouldn't make a good leader since he got Aaron killed. At Alexandria, Rosita and the others would return, and Aaron's daughter Gracie would step out to see her father return, only to find his body strapped to a horse. Michonne quickly comforts her, trying to shield her from looking, and asks someone to take her home before receiving all the news of what just transpired. Magna and the others return when the Whisperers arrive outside of Hilltop following Connie, who was missing before. Alpha offers Luke and Alden in return for Lydia and their extra guy, but they find Lydia gone along with Henry. Everyone begins a search, but without Dog, it'd be a lot harder for Daryl to locate them. But he eventually does, and Enid talks him into letting Lydia go. The trade is made, and the Whisperers leave Hilltop. Henry decides to go after Lydia, but Daryl and Connie head after him, with Carl also wanting to go after hearing about and seeing Henry and feeling all the similarities between them. After all, Henry basically just takes Carl's plot from the comic version of this arc, so they're more closely linked than either of them knows. Once again going back to Alexandria, Michonne would likely take Gracie in due to Aaron's death. 
But since there's no conversation with Judith or Negan, and someone from Alexandria died because they didn't follow her rules, she wouldn't be allowing a revote for the fair. Daryl and Connie lead a herd into the Whisperer camp, while Carl charges in to grab Henry and Lydia. Daryl would be upset at Carl and Henry for taking Lydia, but they would just move past it in order to keep ahead of the Whisperers. This leads them to the choke point where they're able to fight off Beta and his little squad. With Carl there, he's able to prevent Henry from being injured. Because of that, he tells Connie to escape with Henry and Lydia while he makes sure Daryl is good. They go off with some hesitation, allowing Carl to come in and land the final blow on Beta, sending him into the pit. He and Daryl then dip. Just as a little side note, Jesus would be present with the guys fighting the walkers instead of Tara. Anyway, while Henry isn't hurt, I do think Carl would opt to go to Alexandria for a few reasons. One, everyone needs to be fully aware of what they're dealing with. Two, so we can try and convince Michonne to accept the fair invitation. And three, because he wants to see Judith and try to comfort Gracie. Carl would probably have a similar conversation with Judith that Daryl did, but with Carl agreeing with Judith way more about helping other communities. Judith asks why Daryl and Michonne feel the way they do about keeping the borders closed, and he tells her that it's because something happened to them in the past. He describes things very subtly and doesn't really go into detail. She somewhat gets it, but wishes Michonne would change her mind still. They've been spending more time together since Carl left, and he'll be leaving again to go help the other places out. Carl promises to do his best to make her change her mind, and proceeds to talk to her later. However, this just leads to an argument where Michonne reiterates that Aaron died because they went out without her permission, but Carl refutes that by saying more people would have died if they weren't there to help. Yumiko and Magna. These are the types of people they can meet out there, loyal, helpful, trusting. Without them, things would have been even worse. He tells her to think about Judith and Gracie. They can keep other communities, families together, alive. alive. They should have been doing that all along. He then leaves with Daryl, Henry, Lydia, and Connie. Judith sneaks out later that day in order to try and find Carl and help in any way she can. However, Michonne would go outside the walls later than she did canonically. This is because A, she doesn't have Negan to give her the idea that Judith might have ran away, and B, she wouldn't be so closely linked to Judith as she was in canon, so she probably wouldn't even notice as soon as she's gone. But given the fact that Judith was being swarmed by about a dozen walkers, I don't see her being able to take down all of them. Especially since she got grabbed by one that she thought was already dead, canonically. So while she did take out the majority before Michonne showed up, it's likely she'd try fighting the rest, succeed at first, but then get grabbed and eaten by the remaining walkers. This is obviously very gruesome, but that's just the result of Michonne not being as close to Judith here, and also Negan being dead. Michonne and probably some other people from Alexandria would go searching only to come across a reanimated Judith in a pit of walkers, whom Michonne has to put down. This gives her the full realization that she was wrong about closing up Alexandria from other communities, as it only led to the people she cared about going out in secret and dying. Michonne cries as she openly wonders to the group how she's going to tell Carl, what she's going to say, and what he's going to do. She knows that Carl and the others are on their way to the fair at the kingdom, so she doesn't want to ruin things there. She tells everyone to go back to Alexandria and stay until the fair is over. Beth would be present at the fair, as well as Carl and the others after a while. Carl, Jesus, Beth, and Rachel sign Ezekiel's document to unite all four communities, although Carl is speaking on behalf of Alexandria, instead of consulting the council or Michonne. He wasn't going to at first, but he thought of his little sister back home, and that brought him to sign. Eventually, Sadiq and Gabriel arrive at the fair, finding out about the pact, and thinking it's a good idea, but ultimately being super scared to tell Carl about Judith and ruin the moment. However, I think toward the end of the night, Sadiq would inform Carl of what happened. This leads to Carl freaking out and immediately heading toward Alexandria to see for himself, despite Sadiq trying to calm his friend down. This results in Beth and Sadiq going after him, only for both of them to be caught by the Whisperers that night. Carl finally arrives at Alexandria, finding Michonne, who tries to stop him from going into his house. But he pushes past her, yelling, and finds Judith's mangled body. He breaks down and freaks out at Michonne, who is forced to just endure and try to apologize in every way she can. In the morning, everyone at the fair would find out about the deaths of 10 people, all of whom are the same as in canon, but with Beth replacing Tara. Sadiq feels insane survivor's guilt, as he did canonically, and thinks the world is punishing him for not telling Carl about the tragedy sooner, or not making Michonne change her mind sooner. Word gets to Jesus at Hilltop, who is forced into becoming leader after Beth's departure. The finale of Season 9 also goes about the same, as I think Carl would sit this one out, but Jesus might be present here, or maybe not considering he's forced into being full-time leader now. There's no Negan or Judith, so Judith being saved by Negan is completely avoided. 
Carl would just be helping to keep the people of Alexandria safe during the blizzard, showing that he's a very capable leader, even when crippled by grief and anger. And with that, we've covered all of Season 9, which honestly lasted longer than I thought and had humongous changes. I mean, Judith dying? That's insane. Also, I know I didn't even mention Shane one time in this entire video, but trust me, we've got lots for him to come, two parts down the line. With the little reveal I did at the end of the last part, it should be pretty obvious why he won't come into play until Season 11. But trust me, when he does, it's gonna be huge. Let me know what you guys think about Carl and Michonne in the story and also how all the other characters clashed. I really like the role reversal between Jesus and Aaron, and Aaron dying instead of Jesus, leaving us with Jesus to go forward. And speaking of people I like, let's talk about our members. Kyler Fiend, Ellie to Plug 2, Wax and Parrot Fish, Paul Keen, Funk Locks, Hazy Brush, Hayden Banks, Scintillating Susie, Roderick Hare, Marco DeCinco, Raven, and Crayman. Thank you so much for becoming a member and supporting this channel. And if you want to do so as well, as well as get access to awesome perks like priority comment replies and exclusive community posts, feel free to become a channel member for only $2.99 a month. But as always, tell me if you like this part. Tell me what you think will happen next. Comment your request for future videos and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.